Hello. Look at that. Typical Ireland, really. Hi, guys. So, today we're in a place called Saunders Court Graveyard. And you might just see it there in the distance. So, what I'm actually doing is have the welly boots on, but we're going to go along down this lane and uh, into a field. Now, as I was pulling up, the farmer was here and uh, I got permission to to come in. He said it was no problem at all. Uh, he has some sheep out here, which will be interesting to get around and uh, an electric fence. So let's see how uh, how this one goes. But uh, I think we're We'll be all right with the fence. It seems to be low enough. Right, we're over the fence. Um, I don't think there's any more fence to worry about. But uh, you might see there with the sheep, and uh, let's hope they're, they're friendly. They seem to be okay. So far, so good. The things I do, huh? I'm sure, guys, you know me by now. I will uh, do anything to have a look at uh, graveyards and... Oh, they're running. Oh, no, I don't want to scare them. Whoops. There they are. Yeah, I'll kind of do anything now to kind of get a video of... Um, Especially the older kind of graveyards and church ruins and stuff. Hello. Look at that. Typical Ireland, really. Oh, I don't want to scare them. Oh, dear. Hello. Hello. It's okay. It's okay. I think I'll just, I'll keep going while they're around the other side of me. Now we have another fence here. And I think this was, maybe it was a field of beet or something. I'll just get over the fence here. That's slow enough. Now. So let's see where the entrance is. I think it's just here. But just off there in the distance um, is the River Slaney and uh, parts of Wexford Town. But uh, the wind seems to have settled and um, the weather is... Uh, a little bit milder. Now look at this. And I'm here all on my own today. So I've nobody to help me over fences or up ditches or hold torches or any of that. But let's, before we go in, I'd imagine now in the summer this was completely overgrown. My torch is probably of no use today. Let's have a look. Loving memory of Richard Folly, it looks like. 1858. Um, also his son, James. Who died at... Indiana. Mao, is it, guys? Indiana? July 3rd, 1882. And his daughter, Sarah Anna Blanche Folly, who died 1890. And also his beloved wife, Ellen, 1897. Okay, so his son James of the 17th Lancers, who died at 
Mau, I think that says M H O W, Indiana, 3rd of June 1882. Let's have a look at these ones. This is a marble one, kind of a newer look to it, erected in the memory of Joseph Franey Crossabeg, September 18. 13 it looks like, like maybe eight, age 69 and his wife Elizabeth. She was 99 when she died in 1836 and their son, he was 78 when he died in 1866 and his son Walter, he was only 22 when he died in 1868 and Walter's wife is there as well. She was 82 and she passed in 1882 and their son Joseph. He was 84 when he died in 1917 and his son Joseph 80 when he died in 1973 I believe that says so really good ages there wow look at this loving memory of Mary Jane Franey so obviously the same family I'd imagine who died December 1934 age 76 and also her son William he was 46 when he died in 1935 and pa Patricia Jane Franey and the date has gone you see lovely like ivy going along the top of it oh. now oh just have to watch where the feet are so that's the runes can already see that there's lots in here that unfortunately we won't be reading. Find the chest tomb there. Erected by James Stafford. Memory of his wife Margaret who departed this life. 1933 it looks like and also his son John 1928 maybe and his mother very hard to read and we have like a newer marble plaque here in memory of James Stafford 1942 I'd imagine that it's it's more or less the same but unfortunately the marble just doesn't seem to hold up too good at all. Now, this is another fine big chest tomb and really tall headstones. And just look at that. That's kind of like a, I think it's called pampas grass. I might get around that way in a minute, around the other way. Look at that, just beautiful designs on this one. Here lieth the body of Robert Redmond, who departed this life, 1821. And his age is too hard to make out. I can already see on that chest tomb that we're not going to be able to read it. You can see the lichen has completely taken over. Almost like somebody has painted it white. Move this little one in here. In remembrance of the Bennett family. Rest in peace. And if I just look in here, erected in memory of John Bulger, it looks like. Um aged 28, 18. 35 we have some artificial flowers left there and we can see the sheep now are very curious as what I'm doing here now fine headstones there absolutely huge 1802 on this one Thomas Whitty it looks like and actually, I think the one beside it is Whitty as well. Loving memory of Thomas Whitty, 
1896, age 50, and also his sister, Frances Whitty, 1902. Now I'm just trying to see if I can figure my way around here without tripping over or falling into something. The long grass is kind of, it's hard to figure out your footing and what's under it. Now I think we got around to this side actually. Lovely memory of Michael Kelly. 1818, age 73, and his wife Margaret Kelly. 1912, age 74, and also their daughter, Kate. 1938, maybe, age 59, and there's a nanny Nolan there as well. Oops. Thomas Daly, native commercial key, Wexford. He was 82 when he passed in 1903. And his wife, Anne, 1926, age 79, and their daughter, Hannah, High Street, Wexford, 1928, age 49, Mary Ann Roach, Blackwater, 1935. That, I'd say, somebody has repainted the letters there. We have, unfortunately, one beautiful headstone lying flat down. We have another, is it a tabletop tomb? Maybe. Huge. Oh, that just frightened the heart out of me. It was like a pheasant coming up from the, the ground. Oh, beautiful little one here. Uh, erected by, is it James Murphy? Uh, memory of his mother. Uh, I just can't read it. The lichen as well has taken over that one. Now this one has beautiful designs on it. Erected in the memory of Anthony Roach, who departed this life 1811. And also his son Patrick departed this life April 1836, aged 38. Also his wife, Mary, 1846, age 71, and also their son, John, uh, 1849, age 42, and their son, Anthony, he was, I think it's either 39, maybe it's 39, 1854, and also his two daughters, um, I think it's Margaret, uh, 1864, aged, oh, 15, and Mary, she was 20 when she passed in 1868. So the girls were very, very young. I'm just hearing noises here. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the, the sheep in the field. That one is all cracked, but somebody has put it all back together again. Um, we have a tomb here on the ground and a, a tabletop tomb here. Can't really read that 1829 there. William, very hard to read those tombs. Now, let's keep ooh, going. <laughs> the ground is really um, uneven and soft in places and you think you're kind of going to, to fall. 1809, in memory of, looks like Thomas, age 52. So you can see the windows were bricked up. But uh, we will definitely try to get in and have a, a closer look. Look at that for a view. I want to see if I can zoom in because you can actually see uh, two of the steeples. It's uh, Rose Street and Bright Street Church. And then between the two of them, I'm going to change hands here, 
is uh, the friary. Let's see now if I can get it right. You can just see them there. Look at that for all the camp. Now, wow, look at that. So the two steeples, as I said, Raw Street and Bright Street Church. And then right in the middle, the lower one is Friary, the Friary Wexford. Isn't that gorgeous? The scenery there, absolutely amazing. So that's Wexford Town, guys. Now, where to go? There just seems to be so many um, of the headstones dotted around, but I just can't read them all. A lot of them are, you know, just gone past the stage of having even letters left on them. Oh, look at this. Little tiny white one. Directed by Edward Kavna. Can't see the date. 1818, maybe. So the church itself wouldn't have been that big. You can see there a tomb as well. But this one here has kind of caught my eye. If I can get in. Sorry now, guys. No, I won't be able to read it. John. Maybe Murphy. I can't see the date. It's lost the top off it. How beautiful is that? Really, really nice. Another one here. More nice designs are Lord on the Cross. The body of it looks like James Cullen. Eighteen something. The date is completely covered up. Wow, and look at this one. I can see is it seventeen ninety eight maybe? He lies the body of Barna, is it? Shortle? Or is it Barry? Mm. Not sure. Age 67 and there it is. 17, oh, 1790 guys. Lord of mercy on their souls. Well, and that's in um, really good shape considering it's, it's lying flat like that. Now, right, we're back around to the beginning. That little white one there, it's Anastasia, erected by Anastasia Whelan. Loving memory of her mother, Bridget Redmond, 1860. And this one looks quite old as well. I want to see if I can read a couple of these. Wow, there's tombs here that are just broken in half. I don't know whether I can get whoops over it. So this is the sun and the moon and the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Body of John Murphy. Departed his life 1796 age 75. 1860 is wrote on that little white one. And the one beside it is erected by Stephen Bryan. In memory of his mother, Catherine, 1894. She was only 55. So now, back to the start. Look at that for a door. Wow. Isn't that just amazing? And straight away I can see rails. Rails on both sides. And a plaque on the wall. Oh, and we have a beautiful... Wow, ouch. Sorry guys, there's lots of brambles here and I have to try and get through them. Wow, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Uh, don't know whether you will see that. Gorgeous cross with lilies. 
um, in loving memory of Francis. Can't see the surname and I can't see the date. And I can't really get, whoops, my gimbal is getting caught. I can't really show you any better than that, which is a shame because it is really stunning. In loving memory of Frederick Reverend Thompson, rector of Edermine, um, and formerly vicar of, can't read it, who died, looks like 1820, 26 maybe, and of his dearly loved, I presume that's wife, and I just can't read it. Let's zoom in, see if that helps at all. I might see that then in edit. So that's just on the wall and we're into this section. Wow, what is that? Wow, it's really hard to walk on this. It's like really loose um, stones underfoot. But what is that? Eh. Well, we'll have to try. Ooh. Try and get in. It looks like there's a plaque on the wall. Would that have been a crypt? It looks like it's cemented over. How far I can get in to have a look. You can see it's just really dense brambles here. Oh, what is that? I don't know what that was. It's quite strange that. This is the the front of it, and then it's almost like a little shed. It is a has got curbs around it, big cement curbs. And a big cement kind of a cement top it looks like. Carving around the front of it. And it leads me to believe that there's something underground, underground there. Quite strange, really. Um, but I'm going to try and make ugh, my way out of the thorns getting caught. Now, <laughs> sorry guys, I'm trying to do this oh, all in one take, just to give you an idea of just the, the whole video process. And uh, it's not always um, easy to get around. Now we are out. That door is just amazing. And over it, like a circular window. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. But look, at, it's something I wanted to come back to. I was here, I think it was before the summer, it was completely overgrown. I did, didn't um, do any kind of a video on it at all. Uh, just took a few photos and said I'd be back. So we've done it now. And our sheep seem to have gone. And I've brambles and thorns stuck in me now at this stage. <laughs> so try and get down off this bank. Now, other oh, there. <laughs> it's 
I just thought it was interesting. I was curious enough to come back out the second time, see if we could read any of the headstones. Um, it's always so interesting just to see a, a graveyard kind of in the middle of a, a field of sheep and they're running again. And I don't want to disturb them too much or go near them. So guys, just a, a little video, just curious to go back and read them and we've done it now so um, still not sure what that little building was inside the church rooms. Kind of interesting, I'm presuming it was a crypt or is a crypt and I don't know, maybe the top was definitely put on at a later stage. So guys, with that being said, take care, God bless, and I'll talk to you soon.